This is how you set up your ESM to be able to record raw video continuously. Coming up. Hi there, welcome to my channel. I'm Mozart and I'm a filmmaker based in North Sulawesi, Indonesia. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how I set up my ESM to be able to record raw video continuously. So the first thing that you're gonna need to do is choosing the right memory card. I've tested a few memory cards and the one that I recommend is this. This is the SanDisk Xtreme Pro 128GB. This is the V30 version with um, 95 megabyte per second read speed. There is a 170 and 200 megabyte per second, but this one will work, I think, pretty much as well as those version. I own this memory, so yeah, this is pretty much that I can use, uh, but yeah, it works pretty well. If you have the 32 gigs, it still can work, but the writing speed is not gonna be as good as this version, so yeah. You still can use this though. For the Lexar, you can use it, but the speed is gonna top out at, I think it's 80 megabyte per second, while this one will go up to 86 megabyte per second, and that's a big deal, even though it's only about six megabyte per second. So after that, the next thing that you're gonna need to do is download the firmware. You can find the link in the description below. Now let's get into the computer. After you download the firmware, you're gonna need to format the memory card. I recommend to format in XFAT so it doesn't have the file size limitation. And after you format it, you can copy the firmware to the memory card. So after you copy the firmware into the memory card, let's put the memory card into the camera and we're gonna begin the installation process of the firmware to this camera. So after you install the memory to the camera, you're gonna boot up the camera and then make sure that you are on the photo mode. Go to the menu and the last page. Go to the firmware. You tap it and then OK. We'll wait. It's gonna install the firmware to the camera. So Next is restart the camera. And we go to the video mode by rotate this dial. Now we're on the video mode. And what you're gonna need to do if it doesn't show up, press the info button until you can see the magic lantern interface show up. Next thing that we're gonna need to do is you can use two finger, tap on the screen. We're getting into the Magic Lantern menu and go to the modules and enable the first one is the crop rec.mo. Press it. Next is where is it? MLV light mo and then MLV play and then MLV SND for the sound and the last one will be the SD UHS. This is for the overclocking. Once you enable it, turn off the camera and turn it back on. It's gonna load all the module. Next thing you're gonna need to do, go to the debug tab Go to the SD overclock and select 240 megahertz. If it doesn't work, like in my case, it doesn't work with the default settings, you're gonna need to change by pressing the playback button right here and then select SDR50. This will enable the card to be overclocked and then turn it off and turn it back on. Next is you're gonna go to the movie tab and then go to the raw video, press the set button, press the playback button right here and then select the highest resolution and then the aspect ratio 
select 4 by 3 and then kill global draw set to on and go to advance small hacks select more going back right now go to the menu again and select crop mood select 1x3 press menu to load all right and then select the aspect ratio to 2.35 by 1 and then you see we get 5.2k 14 bit raw so after you set everything up I almost forgot one thing that is the I'm gonna use the waveform and turn off the others now I'm gonna adjust the I so probably let's try it. So we got an orange. But the problem with this magic lantern is when you overexpose the camera will be I don't know, the camera become a little bit too sensitive to the light. So when you overexpose, it's gonna shorten the record time. Let's try it out. Gonna do, I think, like this. And then press record. You see that? Yep. It stopped automatically. So the solution for me is lowering the bit depth. I think 12 bit is pretty good I don't see any different uh, between 12 bit and 14 bit the only difference that I notice is that the live view um, there is some kind of or uh, strange lines that appear especially it will more apparent when you use 10 bit there's going to be a lot of I don't know some kind of uh, red lines green line on the on the live view only but on the file it's it's fine All right let's try it again at 12 um i mean at 12 bit this is still overexposed let's try we got orange not green yet I think because my camera is a little bit warm, I don't know, but uh, orange is good enough. Try to set it pro uh, the exposure properly. How about 200? All right, let's try. We get green. If the exposure is set correctly, we can get continuous recording time. And we still have other mode, like this one. You can set it to up to 3K. So this is going to be the same as the 5.2K. So if you can make the 5.2K work, then this one will be work as well. And there's a huge crop, you can see. 2.73x crop on this mode let's try it. okay we get orange yep but i think it's good enough as long as you don't overexpose All right, and if you lower it to the 10 bit, yeah, you're probably gonna get green all the time. Yes. And there's one mode that I really love actually. 
we can set it to the 3x3 or yeah this is a pixel binning we can set it to 1080p 3 by 2 so it kind of like um you know open gate kind of thing open gate ish <laughs> i'm not sure but it'll record all the sensor and i really like this mode maybe if you have some kind of anamorphic lens it will work really well with this mode yep all right so that's it for today's video i hope you find it helpful and if you do please consider to subscribe to my channel and yeah again thanks a lot for you guys who already subscribed to my channel so that's it, see you in the next video, bye for now.